Dr. James Logan is a medical and veterinary entomologist. He studies bugs that can make us ill. Today he's talking about ticks. Ticks are tiny parasites which feed on the blood of animals and unfortunately for us that includes human beings. Now there are around 20 species of tick in the UK and they vary in their size. They can be around a, almost a centimetre in size when they're fully engorged with blood, right the way down to about a millimetre. They can be very, very small, which makes it very difficult to see them. Now, ticks are also arachnids. That means they have eight legs, unlike insects, which only have six legs. And they use these legs to cling onto vegetation and they can be found pretty much in any vegetation in rural areas. In fact, they can even be found in your back garden in some locations. And they cling onto the vegetation, raise their front legs up. And as you walk past and brush past the vegetation, they cling onto you and that's how they get onto you. Now one of the ways that researchers find out whether there are ticks in a given area is to use one of these and this is basically a sheet that we drag across the ground and ticks respond to movement and basically what we're doing is we're simulating an animal walking through this foliage here and the ticks will grab onto the sheet. So we do that for a period of time, we turn it over and then we check it out to see whether there are any ticks on there. Okay, you can see here we have actually collected some ticks and they're showing up really nicely on this white flag because they're a bit darker in colour so they show up on this light background. Here we have a male, female and nymph wood tick, also known as a sheep tick or deer tick. The female is a distinctive red colour, while the male is dark brown and the nymph or sub-adult tick is lighter. You can see how tiny they are in contrast to this one pence piece. An adult or nymph tick has eight legs, while a larva, the first stage of the tick's life cycle, only has six legs. Now ticks can be bad news because when they bite, some people react and you can get itchy red lumps on your skin, just like you would with a mosquito bite. But in some cases, you get something else that's left behind ticks can transmit diseases and one of the most common diseases in the UK is Lyme disease. Now it's quite important to note that not all ticks transmit Lyme disease, not all of them are carrying Lyme disease and even if they are carrying Lyme disease it's not guaranteed that you'll actually get it if they bite you. But there are some really simple measures that we can take to keep ourselves safe. Would you know the simple precautions you can take against tick bites? Dr Logan is talking to a group of walkers on Merrow Down in Guildford, Surrey, to see if they are tick aware. So, who can tell me what a tick is? Do you know what a tick is? Well, it's not an insect, it's like a tiny little spider. Yeah, because it has eight legs. Yeah. yeah. It's a parasite. <laughs> and it is a parasite, yes. Unfortunately, they feed on blood and they feed on our blood, mm -hmm. which makes them a bit of a problem for us. But you, you, you ladies are all dressed up nicely for a nice walk in the countryside. Would you expect to find ticks in this sort of area here? Well, I do because I live not far from here and um, um, we frequently used to find ticks on our dog. We do come up here sometimes with the Natural History Society mm -hmm. and there are places elsewhere in the Guildford area that always they are right mm -hmm. and we always go prepared and I always warn the group about them. What do you think about normal walkers that are out just for a walk in the park like this? Do you think they sort of think about ticks or...? Definitely. No. I'm not local so I wouldn't know if there are ticks here or not. Now one point to note is that anybody can get a tick. It's got absolutely nothing to do with how clean you are or how, how hygienic you are. Basically you just need to be a human being that's got blood inside and walk past a tick and it'll attach on. So ticks can't fly, they don't have wings and they don't jump actually. They can be attracted to chemicals in our breath and in our body odour and also heat as well that sort of wakens them up. Now I'm just going to talk about what you're wearing today, not in terms of fashion because you all look lovely. Um, now I can see that you guys are wearing your trousers tucked into your socks um, which is great because ticks latch on to anything that, that passes by and if there's bare skin there that's how they get in. Um, now. 
you are wearing shorts <laughs> and, yes, and open, open sandals <laughs> and it is very difficult on a hot day isn't it yeah. to, to not wear that but that is probably the sort of prime uh, way of getting a tick basically when you have exposed legs and you're walking through the grass because when you brush past them they'll uh, they'll sort of latch on um, so now that you know about ticks would you wear something different next time yes if I can find something cool and long-legged I, I can see their socks are tucked in seems to be the yeah way to go yeah I mean it is difficult when the weather's really hot but you can buy clothing that's quite lightweight, uh, which, is, which is fine for hot weather. The other thing that you can do is wear light coloured clothing and I, I notice you've got some very light trousers on and that's very good because you're more likely to be able to see ticks against a light background than a dark background because they can be quite dark in colour so that's a very good thing to do. If you come home from a walk in the park it's always a good idea to check yourself to make sure you don't have any ticks and you have to check everywhere because they will climb into all sorts of crevices including under your arms or behind your knees your elbows that sort of thing um, the other thing that you can do and, and you ladies are carrying walking sticks you can sort of knock the vegetation in front of you as you're walking particularly in, in long vegetation that's off the sort of beaten path and that knocks the ticks off the grass so they're less likely to then cling on to you as you walk past would they come off with a bath or do they cling even when you're in the shower, it's very unlikely that that's going to detach them. They can survive even in the washing machine. If they're on your clothing, they can survive. And one of the things you can do with clothing is put it into a tumble dryer for quite a long period of time. I found my two while I was in the shower. Right. Yes, so, and I've got them in the garden, so I have to be very careful. Right, OK. In your back garden? Yes, in the back garden. We live next to a common, ah. and um, the deer come over, also foxes and um, every time I go out in the garden now I have to check when I come in. And as you say most people are, are used to seeing them big when they're full of blood and, and that's probably when you notice them yeah. and you notice them on your pet as well yeah. but, but when they're nymphs, when they're very young they're absolutely minuscule, yeah. about a millimetre in length which, which is tiny, you can barely see them with the naked eye unless you've got very good eyesight. And they can still carry lines, can they, in the stage? Absolutely and in fact it's the young stage, it's those small ticks that are the most dangerous, those are the ones that, that are, are known to transmit Lyme more than, than the adults. Have any of you ever used a repellent for ticks? Only in foreign countries. Only in foreign countries? Yes. never over here. Okay, I mean repellents actually work fairly well with, with ticks. They, they don't like repellents, particularly repellents that contain either DEET or PMD, which is lemon eucalyptus oil. Uh, they tend to work quite well with ticks. Ticks are a fact of life. They can be present in any area that's frequented by wildlife and has good plant cover, which provides the humidity that ticks need to survive. This doesn't just include woodland, moorland and heathland, but suburban and urban areas too. Gary Durant is an environmental health officer for Guildford Borough Council. So Gary, we're in Guildford and it's very beautiful here, but we do have a problem with ticks. There are ticks in this area. But Guildford Borough Council are doing something about it, aren't they? Correct, yes. We've we, we found that getting out to the public in as many ways as you can, um, and certainly, well, these days, the website is, uh, is the big thing that has all the hits, and that's where people want to find out about things. Um, so we've really, we really have tried. Um, we've tried to work with, encourage other councils and other bodies to to link in with us. Now were you actually worried about putting this information out there to the public that there are ticks and Lyme disease around? Do you think that would put people off coming here? No, not at all. I, I'm, I'm a great believer in that I've got to tell the public about things. Diseases are what we're here to prevent and prevention is our big thing. Well excellent, congratulations on, on doing such a good job. Thank you very much. Approximately 3,000 people in the UK contract Lyme disease from a tick bite each year. Joanne Drayson talks to Dr. Logan about her experience. So Joanne, you've actually had Lyme disease, haven't you? How did you know that you had it? Well, I didn't for about four years and um, the GP then stumbled across the diagnosis, really. Um, and what were the symptoms that you had? Um, well, to start with, I had sort of migrating arthralgias um, and then eventually a full-blown 
arthritis, chronic arthritis okay. and muscle weakness. Okay, so the, the rashes that you had must have been quite soon after you were bitten, is that right? Yes, um, I didn't realise the significance of them at the time, but I did get bites and, and I didn't realise they were tick bites then, um, and I had rashes. and. Um, things started to add up when I learned more about it. Okay, and it was four years before they actually discovered what it was, what was wrong with you? Yeah. Yep. A chance course of antibiotics significantly improved the symptoms and that started my GP um, into wondering whether it could be Lyme disease. Mm. And if, if you had been treated much earlier on, if you'd sort of recognised the symptoms quicker, yeah. then you could have perhaps been, been treated and, and the symptoms wouldn't have developed into the, the sort of problems oh, that you've had. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I did actually see the doctor with the um, bite, bites and rashes and um, it was a locum doctor at the time and she, she never seemed to consider the possibility of Lyme disease. Yeah. So what advice would you give to other people who are walking in areas with ticks? I think it's just awareness. It, it, we need to be aware that it, um, it isn't just Lyme disease you can get from ticks, there are other infections that can mm. make people very sick um, and yes we just need to be aware of it and um, seek medical advice if we think that we could possibly have been infected. Well listen thank you very much for telling us your story. Okay thank you, pleasure to meet you. One of the first signs of having Lyme disease is an expanding rash which is not usually painful or itchy, and appears approximately 3 to 32 days after the tick bite. Not everyone who has Lyme disease notices a rash. It may be hidden under body hair or under hair on the scalp, or it may not be visible on darker skin. It could be in an area of the body that's just hard to see. Some people don't appear to experience a rash at all. Other early symptoms of Lyme disease are extreme fatigue, swollen lymph nodes, fever and joint and muscle aches. As well as being bad news for people, ticks can be a risk to our pets. They can cause infected or inflamed bites. Some pets can contract tick-borne diseases, such as Lyme disease, so it's best to protect them with a repellent that is suitable for ticks as well as fleas. If you're taking your pet abroad, talk to your vet about tick control well in advance of your trip, as there are nasty tick-borne diseases in other countries too. One of the most important ways to prevent disease is to remove the tick correctly, and there are lots of ways that you can do this, but the best way is to use a pair of tweezers. Now there are different types of tweezers, obviously we have these ones here, these are the ones that you normally pluck your eyebrows with. This is the wrong type of tweezer because if you try and grab a tick with these, the likelihood is that you'll squash their body which will make them regurgitate and any bacteria that's inside the tick will then get into your bloodstream, so that's not a good idea. The best type of tweezer to use is this one here with a very fine point and what you do is you grab the tick by the mouth parts so when the tick is attached its mouth parts are embedded into your skin and you grab the tick as close to the skin as possible and you pull very gently but firmly upwards so no twisting with tweezers. Now once you've removed the tick the best thing to do is to get a tissue and squash it to kill the tick in the tissue and then put it in the bin. Now it's really important for everyone's mental and physical well-being that we get outside and enjoy the great British outdoors and you should absolutely continue to do that. All we're saying is that when you do that, please be tick aware. <laughs>